Hamas's attack on Israel on the 7th of October was the most devastating attack conducted by any non-state actor on the state of Israel since its existence. I think that's something we have to bear in mind. It came out of nowhere and the destruction, the death toll, uh, the surprise and with that I think the trauma too in Israel is unprecedented. And I think that is the lens that we need to use as we're looking at this conflict as it continues to develop. That means that I think it's quite difficult to use parallels from previous rounds of conflict, uh, from previous Gaza wars even, to understand where things are moving now. I think the situation on the ground is very dynamic, but I think what we can say uh, for certain is that we have a deeply hurt uh, traumatized and angry Israel now reacting. I see two main scenarios going forward over the next uh, week, maybe two weeks, or maybe even months. Now, the first scenario is that the conflict remains contained to uh, Gaza and southern Israel, largely contained. That means there will most likely be, and by the time uh, this is published, possibly already have happened, a ground offensive uh, by the Israeli military uh, in the Gaza Strip. That will be an uh, extremely destructive and, and bloody campaign. Um, but in scenario one, that it is possible that this conflict remains contained to, to that particular geographic area. Now, scenario two is that um, in reaction to that ground offensive, other groups and in particular uh, Hezbollah uh, and perhaps some other Iranian-backed groups in Syria uh, become involved in this conflict fully. We have seen some skirmishes uh, along the Israeli-Lebanese border, uh, some skirmishes even across the Syrian border, uh, but nothing of a major scale yet. Uh, but in this second scenario, I think there's a real possibility of uh, an escalation spiral that leads to a widening of this conflict. It is really important to stress that what we saw over uh, the weekend of the 7th of October uh, was uh, an outcome of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict first and foremost. It was not a, not, certainly not primarily an outcome of regional politics, but really something about the relationship between Israel and uh, the Palestinian territories. That said, what is going to happen over the next few weeks, uh, over the next few months, is going to have regional implications. It's going to have implications on Israel's immediate neighbors, uh, Lebanon in particular, where, I, as I said, Hezbollah is one potential uh, combatant in this conflict going forward, and Syria too, uh, but also for countries like Egypt, uh, which of course shares a border with the Gaza Strip. But then even wider, I think it has uh, importance. What we've seen in the Middle East for the last two, three, four years has been a trend towards de-escalation, towards reducing tensions, with countries making the conscious effort to overcome differences, to put differences aside, to uh, opt for uh, economic engagement, uh, for de-escalation. In many cases, in many of these cases, I think there has been a tendency to uh, more to disagree, to, to agree to disagree rather than to uh, truly resolve any issues. And I would interpret this weekend, uh, the, 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 the Hamas attack on the 7th of October, as a sign of what can happen when conflicts are not addressed, when underlying tensions are not addressed, uh, when root causes of conflicts remain unaddressed. The destructive potential is enormous. So I think over the next few months, we're going to see a lot of diplomatic activity. I think countries like Saudi Arabia, like Qatar, like the UAE, like Egypt, are going to be working very, very hard in order to prevent that second scenario that I mentioned, the, the regionalization of this conflict. They will try to, through diplomacy, through all kinds of attempts at mediation and so on, to try to keep this conflict contained to prevent it from spreading. Uh, because for all of them, it is not just incumbent, or for them it's not just important to, to sort of prevent the regional escalation in order for their own national security, but also to keep this regional momentum, or to, to perhaps revive that regional momentum towards a uh, less conflict-prone, less unstable, 
direction in order to concentrate on their domestic development programs. So I think that is going to be um, the, uh, the, the regional uh, atmosphere over the next few months.